Let's look at the cron package in this section which allows us to schedule programs or processes to be run on our computer and allows us to run them in an automated fashion unattended and have the results of those processes reported to us as a consequence. So we'll label this section cron and it features standard Unix job scheduler which allows us to run processes at various intervals perhaps repetitively is ideal for repetitive jobs but may also be used to run one-off jobs or to run batch jobs so it runs jobs using its job scheduler and that job scheduler can be configured to execute jobs based on criteria including minute hour of the day, day of the week, month of the year, and year such as once per year for example. So monthly, daily, hourly, minutely. Cron allows us to define jobs and these are five distinct fields that are specified on a per job basis from left to right as indicated here in this particular order. So let's just note fields A through E are specified as per the order above in appropriate configuration file. So the first thing to wrap your thoughts around is the units of time with which we may schedule processes such as every minute and so on. Now one of the things about cron which you may call a feature and also you may call it a caveat it's that it assumes that your computer is always on. Now in the case of Linux and Unix based systems that may be largely true but certainly there are times when the system is currently unavailable due to power outage or scheduled downtime. So it assumes the computer is always on and as a consequence it's unlike Anacron which can run processes in the event that your machine was off when it was supposed to run a process which we'll be looking at in the subsequent section. So again Cron assumes that it'll execute its schedule with within your system or on a system that is always up and running and typically for Unix and Linux systems that is the case but there are times when your system may be down when processes should have run that cron will not process and in those cases anacron will be able to help you to process those jobs now in addition to those features cron maintains global and per user schedules this means we can configure jobs as the root user from a system level which should apply to the entire system such as backing up files for example on a regular recurring basis or on a per user basis such as the calculation of processes for a given engineer who connects to your Linux box so per user and per global or global schedules are maintained via disparate config files which we'll be looking at cron jobs are maintained beneath varspool cron. So this particular directory stores the cron tabs or cron tables for users that are defined in etc password or LDAP or otherwise. So when those users of your system, let's say the user Linux CBT creates a cron tab entry the entry is maintained in varspool cron on a per user basis with permissions that are accessible only to root and to the owner of the cron table. The table is just again a text file which includes the schedule and the job or command to run and it may contain one or more of those items. We should also note that cron wakes up every minute so checks all config files every minute including, but not limited to, the anacron file which is located in ETC 
which is a different table managed by Anacron. So it checks all of these files per user, global, Anacron tab, every minute for changes. And if changes are detected, then the new schedules are submitted to Cron's memory and executed accordingly, which means Cron runs as a daemon. So it's always running as Cron D. It also supplies a utility which allows users to maintain their cron tabs. So supplies cron tab utility to manage jobs. Super. So let's get into some of the jobs that are defined and into defining some new jobs. So our tasks will include one, analyze current cron setup. So there are a number of things to check. First, let's take a look at the process listing using PSEF grep cron. That will reveal the process that's running cron D, which wakes up every minute in search of new work to do and executes that work accordingly. Now, any user may query the PS table, but since we're logged in as root, let's execute it as root. And this is the process cron D that runs perpetually. And if we RPM grep, cron will see momentarily the process pa that the or the package that the process is tied to from the rpm database and that's crony and if we rpm query list crony will see the contents of the package which gives us an inkling as to the various config files binaries and so on that are used by the package now let's go ahead and rpm query list crony and this includes key config files and documentation. As you now know, we can also examine just config files used by the package. So crony will process cron.deny, which is a way of restricting users so that they're not able to run jobs via cron. So that if you specify users in cron.deny, those users will not be able to submit jobs to cron. There's also an entry for PAM integration for authentication purposes and a sysconfig cron d entry which contains global settings for the daemon which we'll be looking at momentarily as well and we also see inside of etc a cron.d directory which contains a number of items including zero hourly or items that are to be processed on an hourly basis as well as potentially others such as daily, monthly, weekly, yearly schedules. So that's the main crony package. Of course, it provides the sbin cron d binary, which is always running, which means it is invoked via etc init d by upstart as cron d. So this is the start script, which also means a service cron d status should reveal that it's currently running with its PID, which can be confirmed with PS, of course. So that's the nature of cron with respect to how it runs and looks out for jobs that are to be processed. Now let's examine the tables that are processed by cron and manipulate some of them. So we'll take a look at etc. And let's go back to, it's going to be etc cron tab. Let's go back to our shell to take a look at that. Let's navigate to etc. And if we tab out cron star, you'll see a number of items. Now, you didn't see these items within the crony package because they are or were placed there by other programs, like in the case of Webalyzer, for example, 00 Webalyzer. So inside the etc directory, we see cron.deny, which is empty, which means everyone on the system may submit jobs to cron, and it'll run those jobs accordingly. There's a main cron tab file. It's only 448 bytes. And in cron.d, we see zero hourly, sysstat, and then in cron daily, these are jobs that run every day. This is a job that runs every hour. It's an anacron job. Here is a monthly job, and here is a weekly job, which does a raid check. Let's cat the contents of cron tab and discuss this file. It's already heavily commented, at least in this version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which makes it easy to follow or easier to follow. It includes some variables that are processed or incorporated by every job that executes under the auspices of cron. 
So if a job's run, it'll include this shell, bin bash, which means it'll run under the auspices of bash. It'll also include the following path. Any errors or successes will be mailed to root, and the home directory is the root of the file system. Now in particular, this pertains to system run jobs. You can manipulate the same variables in your own crontab entries for non-privileged users by including them as part of your job definition or as part of your cron table. Now onto the more important section of this file, and that surrounds the breakout of the job scheduling, the time increments. So notice it's heavily commented, including what the five fields mean. So the first field means minute and can be a value of 0 through 59. Since it's already commented, no need to specify it, which means we can indicate the 0th minute or the last minute, the 60th minute of the hour or the 59th, which leads up to the 60th, which starts a new hour. Hours may be specified as 0 through 23, which covers 24 hours. Days 1 through 31, which covers all of the months. 1 through 12 for months. 0 through 6 or 0 through 7 for days of the week. If you use 0 or 7, they both mean Sunday, which means the other days mean Monday through Saturday. So when specifying a job, you are to use this framework in laying out your schedules. Now, you don't need to specify hard values for all of the fields. For example, if you'd like your job to run any day of the week, then a wildcard in any day of the week would allow your job to run any day of the week. Wherever there's a wildcard, that means your job applies on that particular or for that particular item. So a wildcard for month means your job applies to every month of the year. Whereas if you specified a range such as one through three, in the month field, your job would run January through March. Same thing for day of the month. So an asterisk or wildcard means it can run on any day of the month, but you can also restrict it or specify steppings such as every second day or every tenth day, for example, or every twentieth day. Same thing for hour. Perhaps you'd like your job to run 4 a.m. or perhaps 3 p.m. You can specify it here, or you can specify a range. 